Thanks for joining us for evening prayer. This is our chance to pause at the end of the day, to slow ourselves down, to offer all those uh, scattered thoughts to God, to become re-centered on God and aware of God's presence with us. Um, if you're watching live on either Facebook or YouTube, you can leave a comment, leave a hello, uh, so that we know one another are watching. Uh, it's good to be encouraged that even in these times when we're apart, we're still gathering together as God's church. We're going to be reading Psalm 44 tonight, so now it's a good time to grab your copy of the Psalms if you've not done so already. I'll be reading the NIV tonight, so you can open up your Bible app uh, or get whatever you have. But before we do that, we're going to take a moment to be still and then we're going to light this candle as a visual reminder of the presence of Jesus with us. So maybe as I do those things, you'd like to join in. Let's be still. And as we deliberately try and still ourselves, we often become aware of all the thoughts that are rushing around our head. Maybe we're aware that our breathing is fast and shallow. Maybe you become aware of different uh, knots and strains and aches in your body. So God, we come to you as we are. God, we ask that you help us to be still in your presence. Give us your peace. Lord, may we know the warmth of your spirit. And Lord, as we come to your word, uh, may it give us words for our hearts, for our spirits, for what we're experiencing. And may it be your word to us too, challenging us, changing us, healing us, setting us free. Thank you, Lord. We light this candle as a reminder of Christ's presence with us. Psalm 44 takes us in a new direction. And I wonder, have you ever thought about whether or not God is on your side? Um, when we look at the various conflicts around the world, conflicts in which there's often a religious element, and if it's not uh, religious differences causing the conflict, often uh, religion or God is invoked to say God's on my side uh, we're doing this for God we're we're in the right because we're using the name of God um, and you see it uh, for God's people in scripture um, remember they had uh, the Ark of the Covenant which is a sign of God's presence with them uh, and it went into battle with them uh, but they stopped living God's way uh, and so at one point they take the ark into battle with them they're completely completely defeated and the ark is taken from them it had become not much more than a good luck charm in the same way uh, you guys will have heard the story you've heard us tell the story about um, St. Columba, Colin Kill, and his copy of the scriptures that he made here at Movilla. Uh, and the bit that was completed was the Psalms, in fact, it was the Psalter. Uh, and that copy, what we believe is that copy, you can go and see it in the, in the National Museum. Uh, and the chest that it was kept in, and it was owned by the O'Donnell family. And what did they do with it? They took it into battle with them. Um, they, they treated it as this kind of superstitious 
good luck charm. In fact, it's called the Battler. It's not ridiculous. Copy of God's Word. Copy of the Psalms. The Battler. We really easily draw up battle lines and then say that God is on our side. Um, in the in the USA, in the middle of the Civil War, um, two very different sides. One saying, oh, "You know, this is terrible." Uh, your laws have got to change, slavery's got to be abolished, and then the South saying, no, we have the right to self-determination. And at one point, uh, allegedly, someone said to the President, Abraham Lincoln, um, you know, really grateful, President Lincoln, that God is on the side of the Union. And Lincoln replied, sir, my concern is not whether God is on our side. My greatest concern is to be on God's side. Um, that's what this psalm is about. This psalm is about uh, God's people who are used to having that sense that God's on their side, but they've just lost a battle with everything that that means. And uh, as we as we read the psalm, we hear a sense that they're in shock at this. Um, but we also have a sense of uh, repentance uh, a sense that they are going to trust that god is good um and that they want uh they want to remember the times when uh, god gave them victory not because of what they did because of what god did um so as we as we pray this psalm together there's there's two ways we can look at this uh, we can think of some of the um kind of culture wars that are going on in our world right now the battle lines that people have drawn up very complicated issues made very black and white and maybe you feel like you've got to choose a side to be on uh, and maybe we want to say to ourselves maybe we want to use this scripture to preach to ourselves don't just pick a side and ask god to be on your side really seek out that you would be on god's side uh, even if your you know, friends and family aren't there, maybe that's not a natural place for you to be. Maybe if it's not as simple and black and white, we as God's people, we want to be on God's side. Okay. Um, another way to read this as we pray it is for people who have been praying and crying out to God and not got the answer they were expecting. Um, God has not given them what they were asking for in prayer. And so there's a deliberate turning of our hearts to say, okay, um, we asked God this, God didn't say yes, but we're going to be deliberate about remaining faithful and celebrating the good things that God has done. So as we read this, as we pray this, as we pour out our hearts to God through these words, uh, let's also be preaching to ourselves that God would change us through these words. Psalm 44. We have heard it with our ears, O God. Our ancestors have told us what you did in their days, in days long ago. With your hand you drove out the nations and planted our ancestors. You crushed the peoples and made our ancestors flourish. It was not by their sword that they won the land, nor did their arm bring them victory. It was your right hand, your arm and the light of your face, for you loved them. You are my king and my God, who decrees victories for Jacob. And through you we push back our enemies. Through, through you, through your name, we trample our foes. I put no trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory, but you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame. In God, we make our boast all day long, and we will praise your name forever. But now... You have rejected and humbled us. 
You no longer go out with our armies. You made us retreat before the enemy, and our adversaries have plundered us. You gave us up to be devoured like sheep and scattered us among the nations. You sold your people for a pittance, gaining nothing from their seal. You've made us a reproach to our neighbours, the scorn and derision of those around us. You've made us a byword among the nations. The people shake their heads at us. I live in disgrace all day long. My face is covered with shame at the taunts of those who reproach and revile me because of the enemy who's bent on revenge. All this came upon us. Though we had not forgotten you, we had not been false to your covenant. Our hearts had not turned back, our feet had not strayed from your path, but you crushed us and made us a haunt for jackals. You covered us over with deep darkness. If we had forgotten the name of our God or spread out our hands to a foreign God, would not God have discovered it since he knows the secrets of the heart? Yet for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Awake, Lord. Why do you sleep? Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our misery and our oppression? We're brought down to the dust. Our bodies cling to the ground. Rise up and help us. Rescue us because of your unfailing love. Let's pray. And uh, you could be inspired by, by this psalm to pray in loads of different directions. So um, I'm just going to uh, jump off in, into prayer and see what God puts on my heart and you do the same. You can pray with me or you can uh, tune me out and, and uh, pray whatever God puts on your heart from this psalm. Let's pray. And Lord, we thank you for these words. We thank you for the honesty of these words. Lord, we thank you for um, the pain that is expressed here, the pain that maybe some of us have experienced, some of us are maybe experiencing right now, God, where we feel like you have forgotten. Where we know uh, and believe that you respond in prayer, but God, we're not seeing it. And so, Lord, we pray for uh, all those, all our brothers and sisters, all those that we know here experiencing that they're crying out in prayer. Um, but God, you're saying no. And Lord, we pray that. Um, they might find peace in these words, or they might find peace uh, in the same place as the writer of these words, Lord, when uh, when these lyrics end, that you would rise and help and rescue because of your unfailing love. Lord, this psalm ends with your unfailing love. So God, we ask that all those who feel you've forgotten them would experience your unfailing love today. Lord, it also is a, a heart cry from people who are being shamed, people who are being taunted, people who um, whose name is being used uh, with derision and scorn and reproach. And Lord, we know that uh, there are some people for whom that is their life every day, getting put down getting made fun of, scorn and derision. That's just something that they live with every day. And God, we know what that can do to the spirit. We know what that can do to the mind. Um, and so, Lord, we pray that you would be their rescuer, that you would set them free from those circumstances. And again, Lord, that they would know your unfailing love. Lord, as we think of, uh, of the writers of this song, uh, defeated in battle, and as we think of uh, those times through history when people have claimed that you're on their side, 
um, where the Ark of the Covenant or a copy of the Psalms or even a Bible held aloft is used um, as a as a talisman, as a token, um, superstitiously to try and claim God's power whenever we're not acting in God's way. Uh, God, we want to repent of that. God, if we've ever used your name or the symbol of your cross in a way that is superstitious, or God, if we've said that you're on our side because of course you are, because of course we're right. God, we repent. Help us to have that same humbleness as Abraham Lincoln had, not to presume, even in such a worthy cause, that you're on our side. But instead to have the posture that we would pursue your side, your cause, your justice. God, we, we're all uh, joining in this prayer activity on social media. And probably if we scroll down our feeds, we'll see um, a lot of stuff right now about protests and about statues. God, there's a lot of symbolism going on. There's a lot of claims about who's right and who's wrong. God, it's like battle lines have been drawn up and people are trying to make this issue very, very clear cut. Anyone who disagrees is completely wrong. Anyone who agrees is completely right and completely virtuous. And God, we know it's not that simple. God, we maybe feel tempted to wade into this stuff and to pick a side. And God, we normally go with the side that our friends go with or our tribe goes with. Uh, God, will you give all of us the courage um, not to simply pick a side in that battle and say, God is on my side. But God, instead, to humbly seek after what is your side, God. Uh, there's plenty of people saying, oh, this is the Christian way. But God, would, would you speak to us spirit to spirit and, uh, and help us to search scripture and find out what your heart is? Uh, and so God, uh, may we speak uh, your words. May we try to be on your side as much as we can. Lord, when we're engaging in this stuff on social media, God, may we speak words of your truth and your grace. Yeah, Lord, we remember uh, what these psalm writers remember, looking back on a time when they were on your side. Lord, it says, I put no trust in my own bow. My sword does not bring me victory, but you give us victory. In God, we make our boast. God, may we humble ourselves to follow after you. to try and make sure that we are on God's side. Amen. Let's pray together using the words on the screen. O High King of Heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least, and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thanks for joining us tonight. Grace and peace be with you.